Here we have an example of multiple masses. Three spheres are arranged as shown the figure. Find the magnitude and direction of the total gravitational force exerted on the small sphere mass M1 by both large ones mass M2 and mass M3. To solve for the problem we apply equation 4, where we sum the forces as it exerts on the mass of interest which is mass M1. But we have to apply component method and Pythagorean theorem to solve for the net force and its direction. From equation 4 we need to obtain the net forces along x and along y as shown by equation 5 and 6. We begin with the interaction between mass 1 and mass 2. We see that mass 2 with respect to mass 1 is aligned and with the Cartesian coordinate system we see here that it is along the x-axis. So we can simply set the y value of mass 2 as 0. Solving for the x component for mass 2 we use equation 9 and substitute the known values. Here we initially keep the constant g to keep the equation simply and later use it in the final answer as shown in equation 10. We consider mass 3 and mass 1 relation and we see that it is oriented that is not directly along the x or y axis of the Cartesian system. First we solve for the distance between the masses by using Pythagorean theorem as shown in equation 11. As we see that the length between mass 3 and 1 is given by equation 12. The x component and y component for this is given by its sine and cosine function. For the x component it is given by equation 14 and we rewrite this to get an expression for x component and we get equation 15. We see that the orientation of the x component would tell us that it is a negative value since it is pointed in the negative x axis so its unit vector is a negative i hat. The angle theta can be calculated using the ratio or we can just use the ratio in order to get a better approximation. So we see that the sine function is the ratio of the lengths r1 to 2 over r1 to 3 as shown in equation 16. We rewrite this to get an expression for the sine function as shown in equation 17. We then substitute this to our equation 15 and substitute also the known values we get an expression shown in equation 18. Simplifying it further, we get an equation for the x component as shown in equation 19. For the y component we use the cosine function as shown in equation 20. The equation shows that the cosine function is the ratio of the adjacent over the hypotenuse length as shown here. Rewriting it we get an expression for the y component and it is given in equation 21. We see that it is a negative value and this is because it is pointed downwards in the negative y direction. So we see here it is a negative j hat value. We now have an expression for the cosine theta which is equation 22. We then substitute this to our equation and its known values as shown in equation 23. Further simplifying the equation we get an expression for the y component as shown in equation 24. We then sum the components as shown here for the x component using equation 5 for the net force. Where further manipulation shown in equation 25 we arrive at an expression for the x component of the net force as shown in equation 26. We then sum the forces along the y-axis using equation 6. Substituting the known values we get that the y component of the net force is given by equation 28. We then solve the magnitude of the net force using Pythagorean theorem shown in equation 29. Where we get equation 30. We continue to calculate the net force as shown in equation 30. We substitute and simplify the equation and we arrive at the value of its magnitude it is given in equation 31. If we compare this to the image, the net force can be viewed as an arrow going towards the smaller mass.
the images show the net force orientation. The image on the right shows a net force that is directly oriented in the opposite direction as the net force vector on the left. They are both equal in magnitude but opposite in direction and this is due to the consequence of Newton's third law. We now calculate the angle of the net force using a tangent function as shown in equation 32. Using the tangent function where it is the ratio of the y component over the x component as shown in equation 32 we get that it is about 14.6 degrees or 0.25 radians. So, the magnitude and direction is given by equations 31 and 33. Graphically, the orientation of the net force can be presented by both images where the angle alpha is measured along the x-axis.